the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Once again... I invite you to share a particular kind of story which arises from an experience that is unusual. You probably have had a vivid foreshadowing dream. You may even insist that you have seen a ghost or that you knew somehow that a distant relative or friend had died. No matter what anyone may say, such experiences are as real as they are puzzling. They're impossible to prove scientifically because the mind is infinitely complex. Consider, for instance, the problem that Dr. Lewis Roby, a psychologist with offices in New York's East Side, is talking over with his associate, Dr. Raymond Taylor. You heard the tape, Ray? Who is this, Mrs. Banning? I really don't know. You asked me to see her. Well, she was frantic. And now, this request. Why hypnosis? Because only in the state of induced sleep could she relive what happened generations ago. It's a horrible story, Lewis. I don't doubt that it's true. What happened arose from some hereditary trait, some mutation of a gene. And the tiger surfaced. story, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Robert Dryden and Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. such words as déjà vu in which you experience something you seem to have experienced before or inspiration a word that means many things a state of intense intellectual or emotional stimulation or in theology a supernatural influence that makes it possible for man to receive and to pass along some divine truth all quite vague and all challenges to psychologists who study mental processes. That is the profession of Dr. Lewis Roby and his young associate, Dr. Raymond Taylor. Oh, you uh, expecting another patient? No, I was about to go home. Well, I'll see who it is. Thanks. If it's about an appointment... Yeah, I understand. Dr. Roby? Are you Dr. Roby? I must see you. Uh, no, I'm Dr. Taylor. I must see Dr. Roby. Well, I'm afraid that... Please. I... I, I... Oh, here, here. Sit down. I'll bring you a cup of water. No, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's foolish of me. I, I, I won't faint, but... It's churning around in me. I, you must think I'm crazy. Maybe I am. Dr. Roby, I must see him. You're not a patient of his. No. I've only heard of him. And you are... Banning. Mrs. Clarence Banning. Please, take me to Dr. Roby or... I don't know what will happen to me. Sit down, Mrs. Banning. I'm all right. Forgive me for breaking in on you so late in the day, Dr. Roby. You're ready to go home and here I am. I... I apologize. I'm as nervous as a... I'm so distraught I hardly know who I am. Nervous as a... What, Mrs. Benning? Does that unspoken word upset you? I... I, I don't know why it should. Yes, it does. Can you tell me what's bothering you? If I could, I wouldn't have come to you for help. But we have to begin somewhere. Now, you're Mrs. Clarence Benning, and you live where? I would rather not say. I, I don't want my husband to know about this visit. You wouldn't learn about it from me. Your visit is a confidential matter. This has nothing to do with him. He's a fine man. 
Until recently, we've never had a strong disagreement. Ah, but recently you did disagree. No, we didn't. Uh, None of that is important, Doctor. I don't have the usual case history for you. There's... I say this knowing how foolish it might sound, but there is a demon churning around inside me. And you don't know what it is. Why do you think I'd be able to help you, Mrs. Banning? Can you hypnotize me? Oh, that's an extreme... Can you? Can you? Are you qualified? Yes, to both questions, but why do you... No, uh, let me put it this way. What has led you to resort to the idea of hypnosis? Because I feel that there is something buried inside me that only hypnosis can release. The other doctors have... Well, they've diagrammed my life from childhood, but this thing that churns inside me is something that is deeply buried. It has nothing, I know nothing to do in my own personal background. You're implying that it's something more remote? It must be. Isn't that possible, Doctor? Yes, it may be. Excuse me for one minute, Mrs. Banning. If I can hypnotize you, Mrs. Banning, I, I'll record my questions and your responses on tape because... Oh, uh, Ray, would you mind very much staying on a while longer? Mrs. Banning has requested hypnotic treatment. I may want to confer with you briefly after the session. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Banning. You will hypnotize me, Doctor. I'll try to. Uh, why don't you sit in a more comfortable chair, the leather armchair over there? All right. Will you be able to uh, put me under? I don't know, but I'll soon find out. Mrs. Banning? Oh, you are not Mrs. Banning? You say your name is Armstrong, Charlotte Armstrong. Charlotte. Bruce almost always called me Charlie. Only when he spoke severely, and that was seldom, did he say Charlotte. Was Bruce your husband? Oh, yes. Lieutenant Bruce Armstrong. An army man? Yes. A career officer with the Royal Engineers. We were stationed at a small outpost near the Trista River, a tributary of the Ganges. Uh, Where in India would that be, Mrs. Armstrong? In Bengal. And you and your husband lived there in that outpost? With our little girl. Oh? Born in India? No. No, I returned to my parents in Canterbury for the birth of Clarissa. And then you and the little girl returned to India? Yes. We were in Calcutta for a time, and I rather enjoyed it. Then Bruce's unit was ordered north into Bengal, and I insisted on joining him there. And Clarissa? She went with me, of course. She insisted. Clarissa was no longer a baby. No, heavens no. She was eight years old and devoted to her father. What year was that, Mrs. Armstrong? The year we went out was... 1870. And Victoria was queen. And your life at the outpost? Difficult. Really quite difficult. We were, after all, a very little bit of England in a quite primitive and harsh country. It was lush, of course, but forbidding. The jungle was everywhere. The heat and dampness were depressing and no one was allowed to wander very far away from the stockade oh then this outpost was barricaded yes the engineers with native help had constructed a high paling all around the quarters sturdy wood and strongly reinforced that discouraged the predatory animals crocodiles some did crawl out of the river to investigate and one of them killed a guard who had been careless the tiger was 
more terrifying. One in particular? Uh, they, they were around, you see. One in particular was, but... No, 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 I'd rather not go into that. Uh, what about that particular tiger, Mr. Please, Armstrong? Please, Was this tiger a killer? Have mercy. Bruce! Bruce, where are you? You saw this tiger, Mrs. Armstrong? Uh, said, can't we take a short ride in the buggy, Mother? I said, let's. It might cool us off. So the little pony was hitched up, and Clarissa, and I... Uh, 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 Go on. Uh, we had barely got out of the gate to the outpost. Well, well... Think hard, Mrs. Armstrong. Uh, uh, I... I can't go on. You are outside the gate to the outpost. You're in the buggy drawn by the pony. And then... Oh, good Lord! Good Lord! Run! Run! Oh, Clarissa! Oh! Oh! I'm going to bring you out of your trance. Now try to relax. When I say Mrs. Clarence Banning, you will come out of your trance. And I'm going to say it now. Mrs. Clarence Banning. Uh, I... Goodness. Here's a tissue, Mrs. Banning. Why is my face all wet? You've been weeping. You've relived a terrible experience. What was it? Does the name Armstrong mean anything to you? No. Or Bruce? Or Clarissa? No. But I like the names. Who are they? Your husband and eight-year-old daughter. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, can you tell me something about your family, your mother and father? Are they mixed up in this? Well, tell me about them. Well... They were my parents. That's about all I can tell you. We were never very close. When they were divorced, my mother went her way and I went mine. You parted? No. I continued to live with my mother and then I went to college. My mother remarried. I met the man and I disliked him. An unctuous type. After college, I came to New York and supported myself until I married Clarence. And your grandmother? I only saw her a few times. She lived in uh, Barabo, Wisconsin. Her name? Mrs. Paul. Her first name was Laurel. <laughs> what is this about, Doctor? And her mother? I have no idea. Oh, no family albums? No stories about the past? Not that I know of. What are you driving at? I want to see you again, Mrs. Banning. Why are you being so mysterious? What did I say under hypnosis? What made me cry? When we're finished, I'll tell you everything. For now, I want to think over what I heard. Even though I cannot explain it satisfactorily, what's disturbing you is an event that occurred over a hundred years ago. What? I went back in time? You went far back in time. It's remarkable, Ray. The incident itself, it could have been out of a story by Kipling, and even stranger, this Mrs. Banning having the incident buried in her after over a hundred years. The Bridie Murphy kind of thing. Now she uh, said something very significant on that tape, Lewis. She said she was nervous as a... Then she stopped. She couldn't say cat. You know, I caught that, too. That's why I agreed to hypnotize him. When she stuck on that word, I suspected, well, several things. But not what she revealed. I can't get over the horror of it. A young mother and child attacked by a tiger. 
I wonder if the child escapes. There's some kind of link to Mrs. Armstrong. Or to her husband. He was a young man. He may have remarried. Yeah, that's true. But I think Mrs. Banning's related to Mrs. Armstrong's side of the family. I'll try to find that out tomorrow. I wonder what... what precipitated the emergence of that hundred-year-old skeleton. <laughs> Even she won't know. A remark, a photograph in a magazine, the sound of horses' hooves. No, that we'll never know. But I will, I hope, find out what happened to eight-year-old Clarissa. There have been many instances of this kind of recall. For some reason, a man or woman under hypnosis travels backward in time and repeats in detail a conversation heard in an old English inn in the 18th century and can describe its interior down to details that astonish experts. This is not fakery. When conscious, they don't know the things they describe. More about this fascinating subject when I return with Act Two. An exciting adventure in radio entertainment is yours every Monday through Friday. Sears Radio Theater with hosts of talent. I'm Lauren Green. I'm Andy Griffith. I'm Vincent Price. I'm Cicely Tyson. I'm Richard Whitmark. The five very talented hosts who bring you a broad sweep of top quality dramas on Sears Radio Theater over most of these CBS radio network stations. You will hear a play in a different key every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Lauren Green hosting westerns on Monday. Andy Griffith, comedies on Tuesday. Vincent Price with mysteries on Wednesday. Cicely Tyson with stories of love and hate on Thursday. And on Friday, Richard Widmark and Adventure. To enjoy this thrilling experience in radio entertainment, all you do is listen here for Sears Radio Theater, Monday through Friday, on most of these CBS radio network stations. medical dictionary explains recall as the act of bringing back to mind that which has been previously experienced. But what if something is recalled that you have not experienced? What if, for instance, you could see vividly before you the murder of Julius Caesar? How do you explain that? And the person seeing the murder in retrospect speaks in the Latin of 44 B.C., it is that kind of subject we continue to examine in Act Two. Late the same day, Mrs. Banning has just returned home. Clarence? I'm in the living room, dear. I'm sorry I'm late, darling. Such a busy day. I'll sit down for a minute before I plunge into the kitchen. Well, we're going out for dinner, all right? Perfect. But what's the occasion? Your busy day. Oh? Did you like him? What? Him? Uh, what are you talking about? Dr. Roby. Who is... How do you know about Dr. Roby? I found out in the telephone directory. That's impossible. Not if you left a pencil on a page of the R's and checked off the name. I did that. Mm-hmm. Oh, my dear. Uh, I didn't want you to know. Is it as bad as that? I don't know. You liked Ruby? Very much. I asked him to hypnotize me. What happens? Under hypnosis, I... I wept a lot. <laughs> Look at me, I'm still all puffy. Well? I can't tell you anything, Clarence, because I don't remember. Didn't he tell you what you said? No. He has it all on the tape. And he wouldn't discuss it? Either. He said later. Maybe. Well, he's reputable. I checked on him. Are you seeing him again? Late tomorrow. More hypnosis? I think so. When he brought me out of it, I... I was... Well, my face was covered with tears. You must have revealed something distressing. I suppose so. And you can't remember anything about it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Isn't it, Mrs. 
Mr. Benning? Astonishing. And awful. Poor Charlotte. Charlotte? Is that your wife's first name? Yes. So there's more to this recall than we've heard. When all of it comes out, I'll review it with her. Then she will be free of it. She'll be cured. Well, hopefully, but I can't promise that. I'd like to, but the attack by the tiger, the death of Charlotte Armstrong, the fate of the little girl, are experiences that were branded into the Armstrong line. Well, do you understand how? I mean, to a, an ordinary person like me, that's hard to understand. Well, it is to me, too. This is my first experience with this kind of recall, one that jumps generations. Charlotte Armstrong met a horrible death, and her eight-year-old daughter witnessed it. That scene was branded into the little girl's mind. If she survived, and I don't know that yet, she may have borne a child, and that child may have borne another, and so on. And each somehow retained... <laughs> oh, I'm lost. Because... Well, now we're theorizing, but it's possible that the chromosomes from the Armstrong lineage did retain some remembrance of that past event. It became pronounced in your wife's case. Such fears can be drawn out and the person helped, but Mrs. Benning's fear is buried very deep in her subconscious. Mm-hmm. What about her mother? Was she an Armstrong descendant? I don't know. It could have been the father. I wouldn't know. Now, may I ask you to keep our discussion confidential until I have completed my examination of Mrs. Benning? What is your name? Charlotte Armstrong. My married name. I'm wife to Lieutenant Bruce Armstrong, and we have a darling little girl named Clarissa. I watched her grow into a fine young woman. Well, how could you have done that, Mrs. Armstrong? I don't see why not. You were riding in a two-wheeled buggy. Oh, no. No, no. Wasn't there an accident? Uh, It sprang at the pony. The tiger. The Bengal tiger sprang. I can't relieve it. It was horrible. Horrible. (laughs) Horrible. And Clarissa? Run, Clarissa! Run! 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 My God! The tiger killed the pony, and then he killed you. Yes. 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 He... He killed me. I... I... I don't remember anything more. I I don't remember any pain. But Clarissa married. Oh, yes. Yes, she did. Uh, Mrs. Armstrong, if you had been killed, how could you know about Clarissa? She escaped. ran her little legs off and reached the stockade safely. You saw that? Clearly. A nice young man, Tom Durrell, ran out of the stockade gate toward the dead pony and the overturned buggy and shot the tiger and killed him. You saw this? Yes. It was very sad. What happened to your Clarissa? I'm... I'm very tired. Very, very tired. You will begin to come out of a deep sleep. I will bring you out of your deep sleep. She left? No, no. She's 
she's lying down in my office asleep. She's exhausted. Did you listen to the tape? Yeah, I just turned off the machine. Now sit down, Lewis. Yeah, for a minute. I'm exhausted, too. It's not reincarnation. No, no. No, she's not an instance of a soul returning to a new body. What next? I'll, I'll, I'll talk with her and send her home. Then I'll ask her and her husband to come in for a visit. What about her problem, that uh, that churning sensation she has? Mm-hmm. Once she knows what's caused it, may disappear. I hope so. Have they children? No. Well, and that's the end of the obsession. Well, Dr. Roby? Rested? Oh, best nap I've had in months. <laughs> that's good. In reply to your question, I can say that another consultation won't be necessary. Oh? And your conclusions? What I'll do tomorrow is to have the tapes transcribed and send them to you by messenger. You should know what you revealed under hypnosis. Then I think that the three of us should discuss it. All right, but why? Because even though we've brought to the surface a most remarkable story, it's important that you should be free of this obsession. I would suggest ways that I hope will help. Could you visit us and uh, could we talk about it in our home? Or is that all wrong professionally if it is? No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll be pleased to call on you. Uh, Why don't we say after dinner tomorrow night? You won't give me a hint of what's been bothering me, Doctor. I'll just say this, Mrs. Bang. What's been, as you have said, churning you up inside is nothing for which you are responsible. You have done nothing that's been eating away at you. It was something done to an ancestor of yours a hundred years ago. Doctor. Have both of you read the transcripts? Yes. Well, what did you think of the transcripts, Mrs. Benny? Well, the story floored me. I... It's a horrible story. It makes me queasy to think that I've carried it around in my subconscious all my life. Can you explain it? No, not to my satisfaction. My associate, Dr. Taylor, and I have theorized about it, and the best we can do is to relate it to a branded chromosome, a chromosome of Clarissa's that was branded or scarred by what she witnessed. A uh, genetic flaw? Mm, Perhaps. And of a kind that is rare. Then the tiger attacked and killed Charlotte Armstrong... And Clarissa naturally was horrified and never forgot what she saw. And then somehow her horror branded a chromosome. And? And when she bore a child, a slight shadow of what she had experienced was transmitted to her own child or children. Something in you triggered your recall and you retrogressed a hundred years. Now it would help if you knew your family history. I don't. But we mean to find out. I think you should. Trace Charlotte Armstrong, if you can, through your lineage. Discuss her experience. Get it out into the light of day. If you persist, it's my hope that it will cease to horrify you and become just a conscious memory. You can handle that. Yes, I can do that. Good. It's what's hidden that's dangerous. What's secreted. It festers and is debilitating. You're saying this thing still could be dangerous? Very. Going back in time, sometimes hundreds of years, is not unique. But it is unusual. Cases have been documented without being explained. Perhaps it's a form of reincarnation, the recapture of a life lived before. As a poet said, the caverns of the mind are obscure, and that is still true. Our bodies and minds are the product of inheritance, 
shaped by environment. The past echoes in us. More when I return with Act Three. Necessary, said Patton. I've been here before. To prove it, he led the way to what was an old Roman amphitheater, then to the drill grounds, and to the former temples of Mars and Apollo. Patton, who believed in reincarnation, told the captain that he had been a Roman soldier in a previous life. That's one story, and there are others. So Mrs. Banning's recall of an attack by a tiger in Bengal in the late 19th century cannot be brushed aside as fiction. The next morning, Dr. Roby is speaking to his associate. The Bannings are lovely people. They're intelligent. You told them that the Armstrong story still could be dangerous? Yes. Unless she rids herself of its horror, she could, well, what, be victimized by it? Possessed? But you helped her exorcise it, Lewis. She's healthy. Are you worried about a nervous breakdown? She has a vivid imagination, and fear is a wild emotion. She must work to overcome it. Will she? Both of them will. I've asked them to look into Mrs. Banning's lineage. Her roots are important here. The more she learns about her ancestry, the better she'll be able to understand the history of her people. Once that Bengal tiger event is remembered and acknowledged... Yes, I understand. Like letting sunshine into a tunnel to dispel what's imagined to be lurking in its corners. Will you continue to treat her? Well, that depends. I don't think there's any need for more hypnosis. Well, you ought to stay in touch with them, Lois. I want to. Out of curiosity. Nothing more. be late at your office. It's almost... Yes, I know. I'm not going to the office. I'm taking a few days off. I think we're going to get to the bottom of this tiger business. Oh. And the logical place to start, the only place, is with your family. But I, I, I have no family. You know that. Well, there's your father, Charlotte, and stepfather. He wouldn't know anything. My stepfather, I mean. I haven't seen my real father in... Well, it must be 25 years. Where does he live? Uh, I don't know. Well, where did he live? Um, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I think, but I I'm not sure. I don't want to see him, Clarence. He's your father. I know. He is my father, but he never was a father to me. A loveless man. After I went to college, I never saw him again. My mother divorced him, as you know. A domineering woman. They had bitter quarrels. Yeah, a lovely child. I've tried hard to forget it. Well, if you won't see him, I must. Clarence, 
please, let's forget it. No. Really, I feel quite fine now. Dr. Roby dragged the past out of me, and I am fine, really. Good, good. But I intend to follow the doctor's orders. Now, he's anxious to link you up with Charlotte Armstrong. And so am I. But why? To clear away the last shred of mystery about what you recall. Got the whole thing out in the open. Your father's name, if he's still living, you know that? No. Well, if he is, he must be in his 70s. Well, anyway, his full name? Wingate. Ronald James Wingate. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. All right, I'll try to trace him. And then we'll pay him a visit. Telephoned late yesterday. I. Uh, May I come in? I uh, might as well. Wings give me a chill. Thank you. Uh, 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 Charlotte's husband? Yes. This is the uh, first time I've had the pleasure of meeting you. Uh, you won't find as much of a pleasure. I leave my life and I prefer to be left alone. Well, I. Won't take much of your time, Mr. Wingate. May I sit down? No, yes, go ahead. Uh, what's all this about a tiger? Does uh, Charlotte have a mental problem? I explained on the telephone. Uh, We're trying to explain Charlotte's vivid recall of the death of a... Mrs. Bruce Armstrong. Yes, you told me about that. I still can't help you. Well, you agreed to think about your heredity, Mr. Wingate. Well, I have. I don't think I can help. You're American? Born here? Yes, yes. But I'm not here in New York City. And your father? He's American. Your mother's maiden name? Pamela... Uh, Nelson. American? Uh, English, I think. She died when I was a boy. And her mother, your grandmother? I never knew her. But she could have been Clarissa or something. Maiden name Armstrong. Charlotte Armstrong to Clarissa to Pamela Nelson, your mother. If she could link up. Is there money there? No, why do you ask? You talk like a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. There must be money there. You come all the way from New York just to ask me questions about a tiger? I did. A remembrance of the tiger killing her mother. Nonsense. Her mother married a smiler and died of boredom. And Charlotte as a child always was a little uh, strange. Well, she's no longer, if she ever was, Mr. Wingate. Charlotte's outgrown her unhappy childhood. I think you'd better go. So do I. Thank you for your courtesy. Sit down, Mr. Banning. You look tensed up. Yes, I am. But I also have some news that I think is pretty good. I paid a visit to my wife's father... I managed to drag out of him the name of his mother, Pamela Nelson, English. Now, I'm betting that her mother was Clarissa Armstrong before she married. So, maybe we really can trace my wife's lineage back to Mrs. Bruce Armstrong and her gruesome death. Good, very good. I'll start now at the other end, England. And when I've got it put together... I'll call on you again. I want you to. The sooner the better. Oh? It's really that important? I think it could be. In my opinion, and it's only that, perspective here is important. Your wife's recall of that tiger attack was vivid, as if a tiger had attacked her. I want to try to push that far back in her subconscious memory so far back that it will never surface again as an immediate experience. What if my investigation drags on? Then it'll have to. But until the history is all laid out, 
Mrs. Banning could still be terrorized by that tiger attack. What did Dr. Roby have to say? Oh, not much, really. He's pleased about my detective work. You've been gone a very long time. Well, I stopped by my office and got busy about the English end of the thing. What time? <laughs> well, it is late. Almost noon. Well, um, how about a walk along Fifth Avenue? It's a lovely day. I'd love that. And we'll stroll for an hour and then have some lunch. Oh, that sounds very pleasant. I need some fresh air. Are you all right, darling? Yes, yes. No uh, tiger tantrums? <laughs> no, not this morning. No, I'm over that, Clarence. Good. Let's hope so. Doesn't the doctor think so? Oh, yes, yes. It's not in your tone of voice, Clarence. Hmm? So I'm still not free of that thing. Well, almost, my dear. Once uh, we get it in perspective, that was Ruby's word, it will be exorcised. And we shall. I'll hear from England within a week. And until then? Will we enjoy life, think bright thoughts, <laughs> take a stroll down Fifth Avenue? You are a sweetheart, Clarence. Yes, come to think of it, I think I am. We wander around in the zoo. Well, all right. And we could buy some peanuts and feed the elephants. Fine. You, uh, you never said much about your visit with my father, Clarence. Well, it uh, didn't amount to much, my dear. Was he cordial? No, no. But that was unimportant. He's a strange man. Look. Hmm? Some of the big animals are in their outdoor cages. Yes. Look at that fella. Can you look at him or shall we turn away? No. Huge, isn't he? Magnificent. Uh, uh, a Bengal t tiger. That's right. There's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, Clarence, Clarence I, I think we should turn back. Certainly. Oh, you're trembling. Darling, you can't go on hiding. Please, Clarence. I feel I'm frightened. Well, come away, then. He's jumped down from his shelf. So he has. I want to run. Charlotte. Clarissa, run. Run. Clarissa. Oh, my. Bag. Bag. Charlotte. Charlotte. Darling, get up. She's... Dead. Oh, no, no. The Bannings were strolling through Central Park, and they walked around in a zoo. They came to the tiger's cage, and suddenly, according to witnesses, the tiger went crazy and flew at the bars of his cage, right at Mrs. Banning. She screamed and fainted. At least, that's what they thought. Actually, she dropped dead. Good Lord. Before she collapsed, witnesses say she tried to break away from her husband and they heard her screaming, Clarissa, run, run. Horrible. And she collapsed. Must have been some kind of, well, affinity between the tiger and Mrs. Banning. Oh, that's far-fetched, Ray. Yeah, maybe. But animals do sense when a person's afraid of them. I caused her death. Well, that's foolish. Through hypnosis, I brought that killer tiger to the surface of her mind. Well, of course, and a good thing, too. But because I did, Mrs. Banning was conscious of it. It had come to the forefront of her mind. When she saw the tiger in the cage, that was the catalyst. That tiger became the Bengal killer tiger. The collision of the ideas horrified her. That's why she became Mrs. Armstrong for that moment. Now I'll see who it is, okay? Mr. Banning? Dr. Roby? Come in, come in. I 
don't know what to say. Dr. Taylor just told me what happened. I'm inexpressibly sorry. I feel my responsibility deeply. I thought you might. But you were not responsible, Doctor. I've been walking around and thinking for hours. I'd like to blame someone. But I can't. It was fated. Even the cure. Hypnosis and exorcism to get rid of an obsession. It was just fated that the cure was discovered too late. My wife was doomed over a hundred years ago. No one has exact answers to our mental quirks. Doctors of the mind can theorize about behavior and even agree that the past of a person's lineage becomes part of such a person's present. For instance, how else can we explain the appearance of a brilliant man or woman whose parents are simple? There are many examples of this kind, so we do know one thing. The permutations of mental and spiritual characteristics are infinite. Was Mrs. Banning's death 